we'll get going in anyways here. Um, first of all, thanks thanks a lot for being here, folks, and I uh, hope you're having a great week. Long weekend coming up here. Um, you know, last week uh, we had uh, Dan Wagner on talking about the Partners in Protection Program, K through 12. Um, so this week we're going to talk a little bit more about what are the consumers going to expect when they go into a long-term health care uh, situation? And matter of fact, uh, what is health care doing and going to expect from us? Uh, and how are we going to differentiate ourselves, right? So, you know, you've got end users, you've got occupants of the building. And matter of fact, I know that Ray's going to share a lot about what's going on in long-term health care because we have, have a, actually a huge, huge opportunity because Honestly, they're not doing the greatest job, and there's been a lot of reports lately about that. And so I think uh, kind of Adam Wilson a Bruco a couple weeks ago said, now is our time, our time to step up our game, our time to step, step up the expectations because our end users are going to expect more from us, and we are the guys who are going to be the experts. So, again, uh, I guess we can go to the next slide to uh, Mr. Ray Ranger. Um, thank you for being here. You want to maybe introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, so uh, my name is Ray Ranger. I am the uh, Director of Healthcare Markets for Triple S. Um, I have the opportunity to meet many of the members, um, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm really proud of what we've done over the past eight years. Um, I've been in the healthcare industry for almost 30 years, um, you know, helped design one of the first sharps containers on the market uh, when the AIDS epidemic hit, had the first medical waste company in Louisiana. That was, that was fun learning. Uh, it was uh, disposal of medical waste, um, you know, and then I've actually had the opportunity to run a couple of hospitals, uh, EVS, uh, maintenance side. So it goes back a long, long way. And, you know, for eight years now, I've been working with Triple uh, S and our members uh, on process and products to, to, uh, to provide outcomes for healthcare facilities. And I'm really proud to say that, you know, we've had the opportunity to really reduce healthcare associated infections in many, many hospitals across the country by as much as 75%. So the job that uh, our members are doing are outstanding. And now is the time to really, uh, you know, kind of step up to the plate and swing the bat because they need our help. Um, you know, not only with products that we have, you know, but uh, some of the things with the partners in protection now that we can share and educate, you know, the end users and healthcare facilities. So I'm, I'm very proud to be a part of this, Kevin. Thank you. Sure, sure. Well, we're glad to have you. Matter of fact, um, those of you who have not worked with Ray before, and, and I know there's a lot of our members who haven't, it's a, he's a great resource to do so because normally when you get a chance to go out, uh, uh, he opens up the doors for you and, and they talk the same, the same language. And so that actually provides you an opportunity to actually close that account with a higher percentage of uh, folks there. So, um, be able, Matt, to get the presentation up on there? No, it hasn't come through yet. Okay. Well, let me just kind of remind everybody just, um, and, and as Matt brings that up, you know, we're going to be bringing up a little bit of the presentation just so you can see some slides. You know, as, as Dan kind of spoke about before, as the new norms going up, um, or Abby normal, if you want to talk about that. And and um, he talked a little bit about our partners and protection program that we're working on. And if you remember, there are three areas that uh, partners and protection folks is, are we gonna try to um, work on? And that is one, establishing for protection. Um, two is training for protection. And three is going to be on um, inspecting for protection. So as we get into this Partners of Protection program, I, I believe it's June 16th, we'll probably have our first webinar to actually get into the details, but we're going to pro provide you with a whole, I mean, pretty extensive program that's going to provide you with the tools, the knowledge, and the ability to go out and actually talk to uh, K through 12 and long-term health care, um, uh, long-term health care higher level decision makers 
to actually provide uh, the services that you can help them out with. Um, Matt, does that come through yet? Yep, it's come through, so we're sharing now. All right, great. Excellent, thank you. Let me put that on, uh, you can go ahead and put that on. Um, the presentation mode. Yep, so we're, we're good. All right, great. So we talked about the three different areas, right? Establishing for protection, training for protection, and inspect for protection. And, and some of the tools that um, we're gonna get uh, basically in the resources are gonna be some cleaning actual standards. And not only that, but standards, but some best practices and protocols uh, that are gonna give you for every room in a K through 12. Classroom, bathroom, principal's office, you know, um, uh, athletic departments, etc. They're going to provide you the scope of uh, cleaning that you're going to be able to talk to your end user about, provide them with some training plans and checklists. Of course, even with the uh, gateway program, we'll have that along with some inspection assessment opportunities that will provide them to be able to take a look at the results that they're going to need to have. So when you look at that, it's going to be focused on a collaborative cleaning process. That means not only is it the folks that are going to be um, cleaning, cl uh, custodians cleaning, but actually we're probably going to have to get you know, students and teachers and in healthcare, uh, different folks involved also. I, I still show that it's not the presentation coming through, or so I'm not sure if that's Oh, I'm, are you, so you're not seeing the collaboration slide? No, all I see is a partners and protection slide. Is that what you see, Ray? Yes. Hmm. Sorry about that. There we go. If you can then put it on presentation mode. <clears throat> it's still not coming through either. That's strange. Hold on, I'm, I'm sure we can get this. Sorry, folks. <laughs> That's all right. Technical difficulties, right? Exactly. Just a little Friday fun. <laughs> <laughs> you started early, Matt? That's right. <laughs> Long weekend. All right, so are you guys seeing it now? Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank yep. you very much. So as we talk about collaborative cleaning, um, not only are our main folks uh, going to have to be involved, but you're going to probably need to get to the higher decision makers and, and, and have a team meeting to talk uh, about how everyone can be involved to make this uh, happen because it's, it's not going to be just one or two people. It's going to be everyone who's going to have to be involved with all the new expectations that are going to be out there. So we'll provide you even with some consultative selling scripts, um, ideas and concepts, and even some scheduling on how you might want to approach it. We're going to have to provide you some videos. It's going to be a really great program. And so let's get down to, um, um, let's get down to talking about healthcare for Mr. Ranger here. If you can put to Ray's first slide, that would be great. Thank you. So Ray, what is going on in healthcare right now? I mean, let's let's get down to specifically long-term health. Um, you know, Dan spoke about partners of protection with K through 12 and collaborative cleaning. Why should Triple S members look into the same opportunity at long-term health? Uh, long-term healthcare is uh, they're, they're really struggling right now, uh, especially with the the, the COVID-19 that is. Uh, you know, j just made things so difficult in long-term care and actually all, all of healthcare, you know, but as you see, despite its size and growth trajectory, healthcare industry is plagued with large scale problems and inefficiencies that are prompt prompting massive transformation in how care is assessed, delivered, and reimbursed. Um, you know, we know that healthcare is the fastest and largest growing and most complex industry in the world, uh, the healthcare industry employs more than 10 million people, including 2 million nurses, 650,000 um, doctors, 150,000 dentists. And by year's end, more than 3 million new jobs are gonna be created. 
Now, with this, and you know, because of what's going on today, the, the fundamental challenges confronting healthcare have created, like you said, Kevin, opportunities for Triple S and our members, which have the innovative technology and services that address the most costliest problems. I think that you, you shared with us on, on an email recently about even one facility and, and how many people and how many deaths that they had just due to their inability to properly have protocols. Can you share that with us again? Yeah, it was, um, you know, 3,500 deaths in long-term care facilities. Uh, and I really believe some of this it could have been prevented had the proper processes and products been in place. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's sad, you know, to see our elderly get this sick, you know, but, um, you know, we have an opportunity to, to help, you know, bring solutions to the table, like Kevin said, with, the, with our, you know, partners in protection, which is now trademarked for Triple S, is really going to be one of the keys to getting in either acute care or long-term care facilities. Um, you know, and, and there is a difference between these two guys. Um, you know, the, the acute care and long-term care uh, represent two ends of the spectrum of the continuum of care. Most people who need inpatient hospital services are admitted into a, an acute care hospital for a relatively short stay. Um, but some people may need larger, longer hospital stays. Long-term care hospitals are certified as acute hospitals, but long-term care facilities focus on patients who average uh, more than 25 days in the facility. Yeah. So, so it's really basically the term, uh, how long, of course, long term, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> obvious about that. So, you know, um, we know that acute care, I mean, most of us know, and, and even, you know, some of us who are around health care, um, your basic hospital, your main hospital, where you go in for a day or so, right? Right. Acute care uh, is, is a medical care designed to treat uh, and or cure, you know, an acute condition. For example, a heart attack or a stroke. You know, treatment is usually, usually provided by a doctor in the hospital. Now, you know, Long-term care, on the other hand, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. You know, given the, you know, congregated nature and resident population serve, um, you know, the adults with underlying chronic medical conditions, nursing home populations at the highest risk of being affected by the COVID-19. Now, long-term care, on the other hand, include skill, therapeutic, personal care services, and supports that may be needed by a person whose physical and or mental condition limits their ability to function independently. Um, you know, so as such, there's a big difference between acute care and long-term care and who receives the care, where and by whom the care is provided, the care needed, uh, the goal of the care, and how care is paid for. Um, you know, so that's kind of the bottom line of, you know, long-term care facilities. You know, do, do those who are involved with, I mean, as a triple S member, if, if I'm interested in going after long-term care business, right, is that GPO business so the margins are small or is it different or, you know, you know, you know long-term care like, facilities, you know, they, they face the challenge of finding ways uh, to be efficient and really contain costs while also working to minimize outbreaks and other infections, specifically the COVID-19 that can be transmitted in the long-term care environments. Um, you know, so everyone is trying to find a solution to help them. Um, you know, they have many, many problems now. You know, now with, now with the new federal register guidelines where they have to have an infection control uh, professional um, on site, that's going to change things, uh, really, not only for healthcare facilities, but for us as well. Because we always talk about, Kevin, process plus products equal outcomes. Um, you know, that's the bottom line. So how, how, do, how would one, how would a Triple S member, what would be the best way that they start getting involved in healthcare? 
in the market that market segment of long-term healthcare. Well, you know, communicating healthcare solutions uh, is not merely sharing facts and figures. You know, the marketing program starts with an understanding of healthcare wants and needs, likes and dislikes, uh, and recognizing and addressing their desired outcomes. You know, we really call this pre-call prep. Um, you know, for an example, Kevin, you know, when I, if we have a meeting in a hospital, let's say with the environmental service director, I like to go into the hospital the day before and observe, see how long they're spending in a patient room. That way I have good questions to ask prior to going in. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, pre-call prep is, is really, you know, uh, key, you know, and the real communication challenge is marketing healthcare solutions to the individual that's driving that desired outcome. You know, well thought out uh, targeted communications program is required to really drive this message. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so there's, there's, but there's tons, I mean, there's like tons of different segments, right? Oh, absolutely. And, and so can you share with us a little bit about some of those, what those segments are? Because it's kind of confusing to be honest with you. I mean, long-term healthcare, the ambulatory, uh, I mean, there's so many of them. So maybe you can share with us some of those different ones and, you know, acute, yeah, absolutely. nursing homes. <laughs> absolutely. You know, I mean, when we talk about, you know, acute care hospitals across the country, you know, as you can see, there, there are 5,700 acute care facilities, anywhere, anywhere from 100 beds to 1,000 beds. Um, you know, everybody really wants to go after the big dog. Um, and I understand that. You know, but the two 300 bed hospitals, they really need our help. Um, so that's a, that's the market that I would attack right there. Now, if you look at the certified nursing facilities that really need our help, you know, you got over 15,000 long term care facilities around the country, ambulatory, you know, healthcare services, 568,000 ambulatory surgical facilities, 5,200. Um, you know, they all need our help. You know, and if you look at, you know, the total healthcare industry, as you can see, it is everything from adult daycare, you know, air, ambulance, uh, transportation, um, lab testing, home health, hospice, extended living, birthing centers, you know, and the list goes on and on and on of the medical facilities that are out there that really need our help. Um, you know, for an example, you know, Kevin, I'll give you an example, ambulatory surgery centers that are standalone surgical facilities. You know, the AORN says that, that the OR should be cleaned every 24 hours, regardless of use. So that's just something that we can take into the facility as far as knowledge is concerned and help them, whether it's a policy and procedure, whether it's a product you know, occupational health, you know, urgent care, walk-in facilities, the dock in the box. They are on every corner these days. So, you know, the opportunity, opportunity that exists for our members is not just acute care or long-term. It's the total healthcare market that really needs our help. Um, and it's not only educational aspects, it's also products, you know, products and understanding the process of cleaning and disinfecting. You said it this morning, Kevin, you know, you got to clean before you disinfect. Um, you know, how many people really understand, you know, why, you know, why do we have to do that? You know, so it's a, uh, it's a challenge, but it's, it's an understanding that our members have to uh, grasp in order to really speak to the individual. So, I mean, just in the last few slides, I think you showed us over 20 something different seg market segments, right? So who, who should we call, call on? Who, who are the titles? What are the titles that, that uh, our members should be calling on, DSR should be calling on? Well, the who's who in the healthcare facility is really the hospital administrator, materials manager, purchasing, environmental services, operating room supervisors, or the infection control practitioner. Now, I have, uh, I have gotten many members involved in the local APEC chapter because right now, these guys rule the roost. You what, know, what's, a, what's APEC? It's APEC is the Association for Professionals in Infection Control. That is their, um, their guidance, if you will. They usually meet once a month off-site. It's an opportunity for us to get in, to know them on a little bit different basis, 
Um, you know, we have uh, uh, supplied lunch for them and they've given us 30 minutes to get up and speak to everybody um, about who we are, what we do, how can we help them? And that goes a long way. Um, the OR supervisor, they too are looking for a lot of help in surgery. You know, the environmental service director is another great person to get in touch with. Now, I don't really deal with purchasing or materials manager because I'm all about outcomes, not cost. You know, cost versus outcomes. Um, the hospital administrator, absolutely. You know, he, he's definitely going to listen to that infection preventionist these days. So, you know, I would advise, you know, looking at the local APEC chapter, getting involved in that. That's going to open the door. Um, we meet these guys, these ladies mostly, and they're just like us, Kevin. You know, they're bug people. You know, they talk about bugs, um, but they too are looking desperately for solutions. So they actually have local chapters in, in what major cities or all over? Or how do you, how would you find out pretty, about that? And pretty much all over. Um, you know, those that want information, they can actually, you know, you know, send, send, send me an email. I'll be more than ha happy to do the research for you. Um, look at the local chapter, where it is, how to get involved in it. Um, you know, I, th I think that is a good start uh, to opening up the doors, Kevin, to the healthcare industry. So normally, who are on on the um, on the healthcare side, who normally attends those type of those type of meetings? You know, all all infection control practitioners. Um, they too are looking for knowledge. Um, I know they are so upset that the APEC conference this year was canceled. You know, simply because of what's going on in the country today. Um, you know, but right now, these ladies, guys, they definitely rule the roost. People listen to them and what they have to say. You know, now, you know, what we have to do is decide, you know, what product or services that we want to discuss. You know, whether it's uh, Paracep or Cenesis, you know, um, uh, microfiber, disposable microfiber, which a lot of uh, healthcare industries are starting to go back to. Um, you know, it, it's productive, it's cost, it's really cost savings because you don't have to launder the microfiber. So, you know, it's a good way to get in and again, set up a process, a product with process to achieve the outcomes that they're looking for. And of course, that is the safety of, you know, patients, staff, visitors, everyone. And we had the tools, we have the product, we have the, uh, the um, knowledge to, to really go in and help them, you know, whether it's writing a, a policy and procedure, you know, for cleaning a resident room in, in a long-term care facility, whether it is, you know, cleaning a, uh, a terminal clean in a hospital, uh, OR, you know, we've had the opportunity to write those policies and procedures for many people around the country. So, we're willing to help. You know, we have an outstanding team that, uh, you know, right now are partners in protection and especially the collaborative um, cleaning, you know, uh, procedures or processes that is also a trademark of, of, of Triple S today. Um, you know, it, like Kevin said earlier in the schools, it's everybody's job, you know, and in healthcare, that is no difference. Um, environmental services, you know, those techs, they're, all, they're frontline defenders as well. Now, now, you know, they can only do so much. You know, it's going to be up to everybody, whether it's the nurse, whether it's the EVS tech, whether it is the maintenance guy as far as cleaning the vents and other air quality systems around a facility. They all have to have a team effort, a collaborative cleaning process. And boy, I tell you, Kevin, you know, guys, we've been working on this for a while. And, you know, Kevin and Dan and, and myself and Jim Kehoe um, have really put together an outstanding uh, uh, program that's really going to help, especially in, in healthcare as well as schools and other industries as well. We've got it, guys. You know, y'all have to grasp it. Oh, so let's talk a little bit. We're on products and so forth because, you know, and, and honestly, I'm not as familiar with healthcare on the cleaning side. So I know that Paracept was a, our kind of first real initial 
a product that can really get rid of some of the viruses that normal most most could not. There was also the issue of smell. So tell us what's going on with that and what's the new products that can be utilized. Well, you know, Paracel, you know, well, when I first started with, with Triple S eight years ago, you know, they developed a product that really had a very strong uh, odor. It, and I've, really, I've got to hand it to, you know, the, the leaders at Triple S because they went back to the drawing board. And what they've done is they developed Paracel. Now, yes, it does have a vinegar smell to it, you know, but I've had patients that told me it smelled like their mama's house. So I've had patients that told me it smelled like an Italian salad. Um, you know, so it's a matter of awareness, you know, and, and educating the environmental service tech. You know, when they go in, they explain. Now, you know, again, we have had up to 75% reduction in health in uh, healthcare associated infections because of Paracel. Now, we also went back to the drawing board and developed Synesis. Now, Synesis does have a, uh, a, a fragrance to it that uh, offsets the vinegar smell. So we are constantly going back to the drawing board. You know, we listen to our members, we listen to the end users, and we go back and we develop what we need to uh, to have in order to create a healthy, safe environment for patients, staff, and visitors. It's pretty cool. Very good. Thanks. So, you know, with all that said, you know, um, what would you say would be, I guess, the top three things that if I was, as a DSR, I'm interested in getting healthcare, I know nothing about it, you know, how would you suggest that I start? Well, the biggest thing right now, Kevin, is um, understanding the foundation and principles of infection control. Um, you know, and I have a very good document, and you know, we're going to put on some training sessions uh, to help our, our members, you know, kind of get involved in that. You know, but it's a different language altogether. You know, for an example, in schools, they're custodians. In um, hotels, they're housekeepers. In healthcare, they're environmental service technicians. Now, they basically sometimes do the same thing, you know, but the EVS tech, the environmental service technician, um, they deal with the possibility of infections every minute while they're in the, uh, while they're in the facility. You know, one of the biggest items that are, is failed to be cleaned often is wheelchairs. Um, and if you think about it, now you got hand to floor contact, you know, so we have to understand, you know, what the foundation and principles of infection control are in order to reduce that. You know, the second thing would be decide on what product or services you wanted to deliver. Um, you know, if it's a, a full uh, product line to help uh, staff members, you know, and then we'll, what are we going to do? Are we going to educate them? That would be the thing to go in. You know, we're going to help them understand why and what. Um, it's not, this is what you use, this is this, you're going to use this. No, this is why we need to use this. You know, the, sec the third thing is, you know, what department do you want to deliver your products and services to, you know, your message to? You know, is it the infection preventionist? Is it the environmental service director? Um, you know, so we, we've got to kind of put a plan together as to, you know, what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, who we're going to talk to. Um, you know, and Kevin and I really talked about the healthcare marketing strategies this morning. And I think that's a good start to understanding healthcare in general, because it does outline, you know, everything we basically talked about. So, so Ray, what I've heard though, is that, um, you know, healthcare, if I go into healthcare, the margins are really low. I mean, you know, um, single digit margins and so forth. I mean, is that true or, or how do you go about making sure that I'm still making decent margins or what would be the best direction that you would provide? Um, well, a lot of that goes into service, you know, um, it's not just dropping a box on the, on the back deck and, you know, no, we, we've got to go in and, you know, I really hate the word training, you know, but we want to educate and develop, you know, the people in the facility. And that's where our talent and knowledge really comes in at, Kevin. 
Um, you know, it's and the th the things that we can do is you know you know hygiene, you know hand hygiene, whether it's carts, equipment, equipment repairs. You know, they need everything that our members offer. Um, and people buy from people they trust. If they don't know you, they can't trust you. You know, so that's why getting involved in the local APEC chapter, they get to know you. Um, you know, and then they develop a trust. You say it all the time in, in helping, you know, our members and our DSRs, you know, putting a, a, a program together for, for selling. Um, you know, and that's no different than healthcare. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. It's not easy. It can be profitable. Um, you know, we've got members that are having, you know, a 20% margin on what they sell. You know, we've got, you know, one of our members that charge $500 an hour for education. Um, you know, so it's a matter of what the DSRs want to do and what they're willing to do, Kevin. Um, as far as their education on healthcare. So you're, so you're saying not only some of our members are making decent margins or some margins on, on regular products, but also even on consulting and training, huh? Absolutely. Char they're charging for that? Absolutely. Oh, okay, great. Absolutely. You know, and, and it's pretty cool. You know, it's uh, okay, you know, you want me to do this? I mean, we've had a member go into a, a, a hospital and do a, a, they broke down that facility, you know, by every room, every hallway, every closet, every, wow. you know, everywhere, and pretty much put a program together on how many FTEs they need, you know. So, again, it's, it's a knowledge base, what we can do, how we can do it. Um, it's not just about selling a product. It is about educating and service. We do it in schools all the time. You know, now it's time to understand healthcare and really get involved in the healthcare industry because right now they need what we have and what we can do. Um, you know, I'm very passionate about uh, the market, the industry. Um, you know, they are struggling right now. They're, they should be doing things they, years ago that they should be doing now. Um, and it's up to us to go in and show them the collaborative cleaning concepts and partners in protection. And that's our program, partners in protection. So, you know, we'll throw out there if there's any questions for Ray, if you want to put in the chat, um, please uh, send us a question and we'll try to see if Ray can answer those. Um, you know, Ray, um, we always talk about Know, hospital acquired infections and so forth. What is that really costing hospitals and how do we actually have the ability to affect that? Oh man, the, the hospital cost is is unbelievable. You know, it could cost up to twenty thousand uh, dollars if a patient acquires a infection in-house because that means they have to stay longer. So it's gonna cost the hospital, not the insurance company, not the uh, not the patient. It's going to cost the hospital, um, you know, 20 to 30. I'll give you an idea. A surgical site infection, infection is about $35,000 to the hospital. If a patient is readmitted back into the hospital within 30 days of being discharged, that cost is directly on the hospital. And last year, it cost the hospital about $4.6 million because of that. And we can help them. So cost versus outcome. Very good. Um, I don't see any, any questions out there. Do you, uh, Matt, do you see any questions at all? No, I'm not seeing any. Okay. Well, Ray, um, any last thoughts that you want to share with uh, the Triple S members out there regarding healthcare? Absolutely. Um, you know, the biggest message that, that I could uh, give our members and our DSRs is, you know, let's get together to understand the language in healthcare. Um, you know, that's going to be vital and, you know, important to your conversation with the infection control person or whether it's the OR supervisor, the administrator, or anyone else that you want to target your message to. Um, I'll be more than happy to uh, do a web, and we're going to be doing that soon, right, Kevin, as far as the educational aspect. Um, 
you know, it's terminology, it's process, it's, you know, what we can do in a more uh, in-depth type of uh, webinar. So um, I look forward to doing that as well. And if anyone out there, you know, if I can help you, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to. So basically, if, if they were able to gain an appointment with a hospital administrator or essentially environmental services, do you do Zoom calls with them and at least help if they're not comfortable with the language and prepare for that? Absolutely. And Kevin been doing that for a couple of months now, you know, doing uh, three way calls, doing Zooms, um, you know, just today with with Steve Garvey, um, you know, he's got a new hospital that he's working on and the environmental service director wants to get, get a ready to use product that he's spraying. Not not cool. You know, I mean, you, you shouldn't spread it. You got to already have patients with compromised immune systems. The last thing you want to do is analyze anything. I don't care whether it's glass cleaner. Um, you know, so we kind of brought that to his attention. And what that did for Steve is open up the door for other products and disposable microfiber and, you know, really starting to educate his, not Steve's team, but the hospital's team on, you know, how we can do this. And, um, you know, it, hey, man, it works. Yeah, so Steve Garvey is with Carmen. So right. those of you who have questions um, about uh, uh, working, you know, you can always call Steve Garvey with Carmen's. Maybe there's some other members that you can share. If you want, you know, send an email to Ray. He can share with you some other members who he's worked with that are involved with health care. Um, question comes up with Scott Jones. Is Triple S a member of any health care GPs? POs. Yes, we are, Scott. It's uh, we're, we're a member of Premier. Um, you know, we're, we're a member of a few of them. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and if you'd like, I'd be more than happy to get with Dan because Dan really uh, has done an outstanding job in keeping us in front of these GPOs. Um, and from what I saw in them, pretty good margins as well, Scott. Great. Excellent. Anything else, Ray? Hey, uh, you know, I just want to wish all the members, you know, safe and healthy, uh, stay safe and healthy. And, um, you know, let's get together, guys. I'll be more than happy to, you know, train, educate, not train, educate uh, on healthcare specifics and um, help you uh, increase your, your business. Awesome. Fantastic. Uh, as you know, as I always kind of wrap it up um, with just kind of reminding everyone that you know, one of the big benefits of Triple uh, S is, is working with and communicating and collaborating with other members out there. And uh, the more that you can share best practices with each other, uh, the more that you can share challenges with each other, that's what your other 115, 120 members are all about. Um, so, um, Ray, I want to thank you. Uh, of course, as always, uh, oh, thank for you, Kevin. being part of this. Uh, just remember, Triple S members, you've got a resource out there. You've got Dan Wagner, Michael Tig, myself, Ray Ranger, or Shanley, Jim Keel, Sandy. The whole Triple S team is there to support you guys. And uh, have a great long weekend. Happy Memorial Day. Please be safe.